Hello, and welcome to Backslash Echo Let's Play. Don't mind the background, it changes quite a lot. This is a Let's Play of Dungeon Crawl Stone Soup. Um, I saw a call on Reddit for Dungeon Crawler, or rather, uh, for, for Let's Plays of roguelikes, and this is my roguelike of choice. So, let's begin with, uh, let's pick something straightforward. Let's see, Minotaur... And no, I don't usually play with a mouse. Uh, Minotaur Berserker. Very straightforward. I, uh, no, I, I don't play with the mouse. Uh, first thing, check my skills. Um, I always switch skills to manual. Just the better way to do it. Um, I'm going to go ahead and turn on armed combat, which is something that I usually do. Throwing is always useful. Um, if I weren't playing a Berserker, I would turn on spellcasting, but... As you can see, uh, Minotaurs have a terrible aptitude for spellcasting, and Berserkers are forbidden from using magic anyway. So, a little bit of exploration. I'm not going to explore everything by hand, but sometimes it'll get you a little more precision where you want to go. Uh, potions are unidentified until you drink them. That was a stack of two potions of heal wounds. There are monsters around. Those are hobgoblins I keep running into. When I'm injured, I'll rest to keep my health up and continue. When I kill things, I pray over their corpses, which burst into flames, which pleases God. My God, Trog, the God of Berserkers. Basically, my goal here is just to uh, kill a bunch of things. It's, uh, it, it's what Berserkers do. They uh, they show up in the dungeon wearing an animal skin, holding usually an axe, and under orders from their god Trog to, quote, kill them all. As an adventurer in Dungeon Crawl Stone Soup, my main ultimate quest is to descend to the bottommost level of the dungeon and retrieve the mystical artifact known as the Orb of Zot. Along the way, I will battle hideous creatures and many, many, many other things that are trying to stop me from retrieving the Orb of Zot. I picked a Minotaur because it's one of the most straightforward uh, races, in my opinion, at least as a fighter. Uh, there are, of course, more complex ways to play Minotaurs, but... Oh, there's a Ringmail. So I will put on my ring mail, take off my animal skin, and begin training armor. Unarmed combat has reached level 1, so I'm going to turn that off. And that's just about it. That's about all a, a minotaur does. I'm going to go ahead and s focus on training axes to get to minimum delay. Axes do tend to be slow once they get up to the larger ones. So you can see I'm getting hungry, so I'm going to butcher this snake that I just killed and eat it. Piece of cake. I picked up a couple of darts here as throwing weapons, and I'm going to check this new potion that I found. Now that I've reached level 3, I'm allowed to increase an attribute. Being a berserker, I'm kind of stupid. As you can see, my intelligence is 4. But my strength is 21, and once I increase it, it'll be 22. Pray over these corpses... You can see that these have a, these items have a green outline, which means they are set to be automatically picked up while I'm exploring. This is a scroll. Scrolls are useful, although they also, like potions, are unidentified at first. Once you use one, you find out what it does. This one asked me to use the scroll on another item. Oops, let's choose these scrolls here. The first scroll that I touched was a scroll of Identify. When I read it, it let me determine the properties of the other scrolls, which are Remove Curse. These items to my left are poison needles, but they're not just any poison. They're tipped with a very, very deadly poison called Curar. They are set to be automatically picked up because they are so dangerous. the game is set to automatically pick them up in order to keep them out of monsters' hands. That is an altar to another god, which I will describe after I finish killing a jib, who is kind of scary, 
So I am going to go berserk. I've been granted the ability to go berserk by Trog with a perfect success rate. As you can see, I have no chance of failure. Which does not cost piety, only food. It costs a lot of food to go berserk, but it makes my strength increase, my health increase, and my attacks do more damage. You can see I killed uh, Ijib in about four attacks. Ijib was carrying a dagger of draining, which I am going to also pick up for the same reason as the QR needles. It's very dangerous. I chopped up Ijib's corpse and ate him as well because I was hungry after going berserk, but because his meat was contaminated, goblin meat is contaminated, it made me nauseous, which means I can't eat for a little while. Anyway, right up here is an altar to a god Colossian Zari, who is not Trog. If I did not have a god currently, or if I wanted to change gods, I could pray at the altar and join Ashen Zari's religion instead. However, being that I already have a god, that would cause me to go under penance to Trog, who would drop horrible monsters on my face to kill me which would be bad. Instead, I'm going to use another ability that Trug gives me, Burn Spellbooks, to set the spellbook that was here on fire, pleasing Trog, and making him happier with me. Troglodytes are not only forbidden from using magic, they are encouraged to destroy magic users and sources of magical learning. For the moment, my goal is still to just get stronger. That's why I'm killing rats and kobolds and such like. Looking for a better weapon and some better armor. Because I am just going to play a pretty standard uh, berserker class with a nice heavy set of uh, maybe plate mail or if I'm lucky a dragon armor. Dragon scales make fantastic armor, you know. And uh, a massive fuck-off axe. And that's pretty much going to be my strategy for dealing with almost everything in the dungeon. If it moves, I'm going to kill it. Ooh, a bigger axe. See? Right there, there's a war axe. Which I will wield instead of my hand axe. It is visibly bigger. And now I can quiver my hand axe to throw that. Let's see here, some regular poison needles. Oh, I'm getting hungry again. I'll have to do something about that. I'm getting very hungry. I'm near starving. Okay, let's head downstairs. And there's a goblin to eat. Yummy, yummy. new potion, which made me feel mighty. There's a spear back there, but I'm going for axes. Oh, worker ants. Worker ants are very annoying. However, I, um, I, I, I killed it in one hit. Okay, so it wasn't that annoying. But worker ants can be very annoying because they're faster than most players. Ooh, a weapon shot. A Dwarven Battle Axe of Electrocution. A Battle Axe of Venom. A Triple Sword of Protection. There are some very nice things in this shop, none of which can I afford. I'm going to stick them all on my shopping list and come back later. The first one that I'm probably going to buy is that Battle Axe of Venom because it's rather cheap. I found an unidentified ring and I put it on, which was stupid because I could have just identified it. And it is a cursed ring of hunger. As perhaps you can guess, the cursed ring of hunger makes me hungry faster, so I'm going to read a scroll of remove curse, take the curse off it, and drop it. Wearing unidentified 
jewelry, drinking unidentified potions, reading unidentified scrolls, all of these, holy crap, fighting monsters who are clearly stronger than you, all of these are bad ideas that I should not be doing. I'm getting careless because Minotaur Berserkers are fairly strong. Pretty much the whole way through the game, but especially in the beginning. Minotaurs are a powerful race for fighting classes, and Berserkers as a class in general are damn near unstoppable in the early game. I'm going to go explore down a different staircase, away from that uh, orc warrior that carved me up like luncheon meat. And being as this is a uh, let's play, I'm going to try and be a little more uh, cautious and hopefully trying to explain what I'm doing and what I'm planning to do as I go along will help me to continue thinking through what I'm doing instead of getting careless. One thing that I will often do is whenever I see a down staircase, you can tell it's unexplored because there's a small asterisk there, I will always poke my head down and then go back up if I'm not done exploring. This is just a habit that I have formed because it makes certain that no matter where I am, if I fall down a trap that puts me down on the next level, see this level is almost fully explored, but if I go down here and begin running around and exploring, if I get off to say over here and I'm lost and I'm in trouble and I need to run, I know where all three exits from this level are there, there, and there. It's just a habit that I have, which, uh, in my opinion, makes the game play a bit safer. I'm going to do a little more exploration. Actually, I might have to uh, go back and fight that orc warrior now. That's not the downstairs. Where's the downstairs? There it is. There we are. Okay, I know that orc warrior is down here. I can see the blood splatters on the ground where he kicked my ass earlier. I have found some gluggy brown potions, which are potions of porridge. Those are very useful to have around. I also have a slimy blue potion, which is a potion of agility. Lovely. Looks as if... Let's see, where are you? I'm actually poking around looking for this orc warrior now because I want the experience from killing him. And I want his armor. What has he got? It's got a sword. Ah, it's got a splint mail. And the splint mail is stronger than what I'm than the ring mail that I'm wearing, which means I want it. So let's read my last two unidentified scrolls, which are magic mapping and blinking. Neither very useful. I'm going to throw a poison dart, which missed. Well, it hit him, but it didn't do any damage and didn't poison him. Then I'm going to go berserk. And attack. Took some damage, but I was successful. I pray over his corpse to please Trog, pick up my poison dart, and pick up his armor and sword. I'm not going to switch to his sword, but I wanted to make sure it didn't have a useful enchantment. I will start wearing his armor, which raises my armor class from 5 to 9. Here. I have to rest up and head downstairs. Pick up some more curar needles so that no monsters can find them. Drink a potion I just found. Oh, that was a potion of berserk. Which are especially useful for pe Oh, crud. Alright, I stepped around to that corner, and I found, as you can see from my memory of that spot, an orc wizard in the purple robes. There, let me... An orc wizard there in the purple robes, and an orc priest in the green robes. Wizards are spellcasters, duh. They're fairly strong, but fairly brittle. If I can get next to him and kill him before he blinks away, I'll be fine. The priest is altogether more dangerous. He doesn't need to get anywhere near me. 
Nor does the wizard, actually. But most of them actually usually will run toward me if I hide around a corner, which is basically what I'm doing. You can see my turn counter is not going up because I've paused to explain this. What the priest will do is smite you, which means he can simply pray to the orc god, who will reach down and damage me for actually a rather significant amount of damage for this point in the game, once a turn, as often as he wants, with no real limit. Worst of all, while the wizard spells are just as powerful in most cases, the wizard's spells are beams, which means they travel along a line of sight. However, smiting does not travel along a line of sight. It simply hits you wherever you are as long as you are within vision of the priest, which is why I immediately ducked back out of sight. From what I can tell, the wizard saw me and the priest didn't. The wizard cast a magic dart at me, but the priest did not see me. So, I've ducked back around the corner. I wait until the wizard comes out, duck down the stairs and back up, then down. Since the orc was next to me on the staircase, when I went back downstairs, it followed me. That is a strategy that is called stair dancing. This time I've walked back up the stairs and the wizard is next to me. I walk back down, the wizard came down with me, but the wizard came down with me alone. It's much easier to kill one enemy at a time, so that I also have time to rest, than to kill two, or four as there were. Okay, the orc to my left has a trident, which is actually fairly powerful. However, the orc priest is the danger here, so he gets to die first, and I kill him in one hit. That hits me level 6. As my third level, it lets me increase my strength again. Then I kill the orc. Pray over the carcasses. Well, only the orc left one. And continue on my way, always keeping an eye out for a bigger axe and a bigger set of armor. The armor that I'm currently wearing is... Oops, wrong button. Splint mail. The only natural armor that is stronger than splint mail would be plate mail. And it doesn't look like I'm going to find any plate mail, but you never know. Sometimes it's lying around. And that is the only uh, natural armor that's stronger than splint. To get stronger than plate mail, you have to have a magical armor, like a dragon armor, or crystal plate mail, or uh, one of a handful of artifacts that are useful. Here we see two enemies approaching me in a hallway, an ooze and a, ho and a uh, hobgoblin. Neither of them are particularly dangerous. I could probably kill them both at the same time. However, the safer strategy is to stay in this narrow hallway where they have to approach me one at a time. That way, I don't have a hobgoblin wailing on me while I kill the ooze and vice versa. That is a worm. It's basically a sandworm. Forever its body and please Trog. Speaking of pleasing Trog, I have now reached four stars of piety, which makes me a shining star in the eyes of Trog, the Wrathful, and granted me a new ability called oops, Brothers in Arms. It has a high failure rate because of my piety right now, but what Brothers in Arms does is summons huge angry allies to wreak havoc. At Four stars of piety, this will usually summon, say, a grizzly bear or a black bear, which will go berserk and fight at my side. At higher levels of piety, it might summon an ogre or even a troll. Or, better yet, at the higher piety still, an iron troll, a hill giant, and diverse other, uh, let's say, delicately large, stupid creatures which hit things very hard until they stop moving. Which, again, is basically my job. I'm kind of a large, stupid creature whose job is to hit things very hard until it stops moving. Again, 4 intelligence, 23 strength. A little unbalanced there. I should do something about that. You can see this vault is a little bit different. Um, this is 
a room that is dedicated to a different god. You can see the altar here in the corner, the altar of Zin, the lawgiver, the judge. In the corner behind a glass wall is an angel. Angels are, to put it politely, obscenely dangerous. They're very fast, resistant to electricity, poison, very hard to see. You can see invisible, which means it's very hard to hide from. You can, t you can see I've got a glow around me having walked into this room that's from the angel's divine halo, which surrounds it and illuminates it, which makes it very difficult to hide from. All right, I have now got enough money to go buy the Battle Axe of Venom, which I am going to do, and wield. I no longer need this War Axe, so I'm going to drop it, and I'm going to head downstairs. A Battle Axe is the type of axe that most uh, axe wielders will end up using for the extended game. I would need to enchant this if I wanted it to be particularly useful later on, and I would specifically want to battle axe with a better enchantment than Venom. But right this second... Ooh, that's a different mail. Uh, that's not as useful. Right at this second, a um, an axe of Venom is actually fairly handy. Most creatures at this point are vulnerable to poison, whereas later on they will not be. A battle axe is a big two-handed axe that, uh, darn. A battle axe is a big two-handed axe, and it's the only axe that is stronger than a battle axe is an executioner's axe, which are incredibly rare. I will most likely end up with one later, because Trog, at the very end of the, uh, uh because once you get to extremely high levels of piety with Trog, he starts giving you gifts, which are usually weapons. Weapons or ammunition. Since I don't use any uh, ranged weaponry, I just throw things. I'm going to go ahead and turn off dodging once it reaches 5, I think. Okay, sorry, a little distracted. I don't use um, bows or crossbows or slings. I just uh, personally prefer throwing weapons, so with luck, Trog will mostly give me weapons, which will be nice big axes. With any luck, he will give me a uh, an Executioner's Axe. See, I set that spellbook on fire, too. He will give me an Executioner's Axe, and all will be well. But until then, the best axe that I'm going to have is this Battle Axe. Uh, if you remember, also on here was a battle axe of electrocution, which is not the best brand on an axe either, but it's better than Venom. Electrocution is better on small weapons because electrocution does a fixed amount of extra damage. It's like mm, it's D, D12 plus 10, I think? I cannot remember. Let's find out. I like to learn things. Um, all.devels.org and knowledge bots. Use the knowledge bots. Crawl.devels.org slash wordpress slash bots. 9 plus D15. That's it. 33% of the time it will do an extra 9 plus D15 damage. However, it's because it's a flat amount of damage instead of, say, flaming. Which increases your damage by about, on average, 25%. You can see the staircase looks different. This is a staircase down to a branch. In this case, though, the branch is just the ecumenical temple the Temple of the Gods. You can see there are altars to many gods here, including Trog. 
who I will go and kneel at his altar because that's how I roll. But there are also altars to many different gods. Seth Moon of the Librarian. I'm sorry, the Lore Minder. She is uh, essentially the, the Librarian of Magic. Iridelimnal the Dark, the God of Death. The God of Death Knight. Kabridos, the God of Time. Now, like Shobe, the trickster god of gamblers. Fedhasmadash, the god of nature. Makhleb, the god of hell. Kikubaklu, good luck pronouncing that. The uh, demon god of necromancy. The shining one the god of paladins, and uh, the holy crusade against evil. Elivalon, the healer. And Okawaru, the war master. The god of war. Um, if I were not a troglodyte, I would probably consider a becoming a, an adherent of Okawaru, because it was with Okawaru that my original win happened. I was also playing a Minotaur, actually. It was a Minotaur fighter of Okawaru. He is similar to Trog, but does not forbid the use of magic, and also gives the possibility of gifts of armor. However, his uh, granted abilities are... well, they're not necessarily better or worse, but they're different. Where Berserk just makes you a terror in melee by granting you increased strength, health, and damage, Okawaru's main ability gives plus five to all combat skills. Basically everything on the left side. making you, therefore, just simply better at fighting, as opposed to stronger. Okawaru's other ability is Finesse, which increases your attack speed. I haven't shown you Trog's second ability, which is called Trog's Hand. It grants you temporary regeneration and magic resistance. Ah, oh, crap. Okay, um... The Orc Wizard, who, unless I'm mistaken, is standing right here, just cast a spell to turn invisible. I'm going to step backwards, hide around the corner here, and wait. You can see it shouted and made a noise, which let me know it was there. So I'm going to attack it, and it hit me. It hit me and poisoned me, which means it's holding a dagger of poison or some such thing. It's poisoning me quite badly, actually. This is very annoying. I hope I have a potion of curing, or this is going to hurt a lot. I picked up a magic wand back there. It is a twisted iron wand. Wands are also shuffled, so I'm going to cast it and see what happens. And what happens is nothing. That is unfortunate. Well, I am going to just keep trying to kill this thing, which I've successfully done. Kill the magic user, Trog is pleased, and these other ones will die quickly. Now, I have to deal with this poison somehow, and the way to do that is a potion of curing, which I don't believe I've identified yet. No. So, one of these unidentified potions might be healing. Let's try this one. That was a potion of restore abilities, which was unsuccessful. This is a potion of slowing. So without the potion of curing, I can't actually cure my poison status, and I have to wait it out. Fortunately, I have a ton of health, and am able to wait it out safely. However, poison will probably be the thing that kills you more often than almost anything else in the early game. Except maybe Sigmund. Who, I have not seen this run. There's Edmund, who is Sigmund's youngest brother. Let's see... That's right, he has a flail and maybe some nice armor. What has he got? Ring mail. No, that's useless. 
Okay, he's doing a lot of damage. I'm going to flee. Slowly. I'm going to keep hitting him occasionally, trying to poison him. Yes! Ha! See, he's poisoned as I flee. Yes! Die to the poison. Trog doesn't care how you kill them as long as they die. Eat his flesh. And rock and roll. If I were a mace user, I'd have been very pleased. Why is everything suddenly poisoning me? What I just did is a great strategy with centaurs. It was here when it saw me and shot me when I came around the corner. Instead of charging at it, which would give it... Let's see, I'd have to take one, two, three, four, five, six steps to reach it. And centaurs can shoot very fast, sometimes twice in a turn. Instead of giving it all of those opportunities to shoot me, I just took a step back around the corner where it couldn't see me and pause the broadcast, which I don't know how to do. Eh, whatever. I'll have to edit that. Anyway, instead of taking the six steps it would take to walk all the way over there, getting arrows shoved up my ass the entire time and getting worse poisoned even than I was before, I took a step back around the corner where it couldn't see me, which made him run all the way up to attack me. That way I was able to take one step forward and be right next to him, which makes him put the bow away and get out a weapon. this way, he is easily dispatched, and I get to eat him. I suppose I could pick up a bow. Eh, I don't feel like it. Minotaurs are good at ranged weaponry as well. Not quite as much as they are at physical, but not bad. I find ranged weaponry to be kind of a pain, but it does definitely have its uses. Killing things before they get close to you is often a good thing in Crawl. That is a Sky Beast, which turns invisible very annoyingly, but which dies fairly easily. Let's read some new scrolls. Ah, Curse Armor. That stinks. Well, I have no need to take this armor off for the moment. And that is a jelly. I hate jellies. I'm going to take a moment to identify this wand that I'm carrying. Which is a wand of slowing that I then use upon the jelly. I don't really have a choice here. I hate jellies. I really hate jellies. They are acid creatures. Which means that they do a lot of damage on their acid and have a chance of corroding my weapon and armor, which fortunately did not happen this time. But it's very difficult to fight a jelly for any length of time without taking some uh, hits to your armor and weapons and having them degrade, which, as perhaps you can imagine, makes the game much more difficult. Um, okay, downstairs once more. Onward to D7. What did I not explore? So strange. There's the other up staircase. I didn't see this on the other level. Ah, oh, it was in a shut off portion, that's why. Okay, so what's around besides more monsters? 
nothing. There was a hidden door here that I didn't know about. I should start training that soon. What are we looking at? La da da da. I meant to turn off dodging. Whoops. Yeah, I better turn it off. I'll turn on evocations instead, which controls uh, things like magic wands and oh, there was a trap there that I didn't see because I haven't trained traps and doors. Guess I'll start doing that. It dropped poison gas on me. Let me step out of it. There we are. If I was training long swords, I'd be excited. There's a great sword down here. Negative 316. That's about as strong as my uh, as my battle axe here. Ooh, more poison darts. Yay. A new wand, which I will test by zapping at this guy. It is a wand of polymorph other. Turns him into a giant centipede, which is not scary in the slightest. New potion! A potion of poison. Of course those are sitting around. Because who doesn't leave bottles of poison just laying around for any old asshole to pick up? That hippogriff beat the hell out of me. I was not expecting to take that much damage. Alright, mental note. Read a new scroll, which may be either recharging or armor enchantment. I take a chance on enchant armor and was right. Which means I am now wearing... means I'm now sitting here waiting for this poison to wear off before I die. Okay, good. Oh, I'm starving, which means I need to eat some permafood. It's better not to eat things like rations or fruit that never goes bad if you can help it. But if you're all the way at starving, you take a massive penalty to fighting, which makes it very difficult to kill monsters to eat. So... Let's see. I'm not having any problems with my strength or carry capacity. So I'm going to go ahead and put a point into intelligence for protection. You see, it's possible to lose stats. I'm going to back away and try to polymorph. Turn it into a centaur, which is easily killed. Anyway, it's easy to lose stats in this game, either from uh, mutations or cursed equipment which can lower your any given stat by up to 8, I think. So, the best way to remain safe is to, well, first be careful about what you put on, and be careful what god you piss off, and be very careful about making sure your main, your three main stats are all higher high enough that you can't just easily be killed. This battle is going poorly, so I'm going to drink a potion of heal wounds. Good. And hey, there's a chain mail. A uh, plate mail, rather. So we pick up the plate mail and put it on. Let's see. Let's check our AC. It's 11 and 6 right now. If I put on the AC, that gets me to 12 AC. Good. That is all I need. Goodbye, splint mail. No, I accidentally took it off. That's not what I meant to do. Okay, I'll put it back on. I've got exactly what I'm looking for. Let's drop this axe, too. A little more explanation. Da -da -da. Next thing I'm going to do is run back to the temple and drop some things off. You see, no monsters can spawn in the temple, which means it's a safe place to drop things that you don't want monsters to have, like these curar needles, this wand of polymorph other, a little bit of fruit so that I can have some later. and this, drag this dagger of draining that I didn't want anybody else to get their hands on. Sometimes if you leave a level for a while, more monsters will appear on it. Which means just because you've cleared a level doesn't mean it's safe. 
but as I say, no monsters can appear in the temple, which makes it a good place to drop things if you don't want to carry them around, want to keep them away from monsters, or if you're playing a different race or class that has a low strength, which means you have a low carrying capacity. Okay, I have here an orc, a priest, and a knight? No, just a warrior, an orc warrior. So, first thing I want to do is break eye contact with this priest so that he can't smite me. My second goal is to step this way into this tunnel. Step up and then down. Now the priest is right there. Fortunately, I was not able to kill the priest, so I have to keep backing away. Now that I'm here, I'm going to go berserk and kill them both. was carrying a staff. I think I will check it. It's a staff of channeling. Not very useful for me, but very useful for a caster. Now I find out why those orcs are hanging around. There's a staircase down to the orcish mines right here. Okay. Okay. I'm very afraid of those stairs now. You probably did not see, but down those stairs was... You can see my annotation. Down those stairs was Erolcha. Erolcha is an ogre mage who is excessively dangerous because she possesses the power to banish me to the abyss. I'm only level 9, and I am in no shape to be handling the abyss. This would be another easy way for me to die. If I get banished, it's going to be pretty much the end of me. This time, witness me being smart and identifying this, wand, this ring before I put it on. It is a ring of plus five dexterity, which is useful, so I will wear it. Even I can learn from mistakes. Step carefully and focus down priests. Orcs are not scary. Priests, however, are dangerous. Ogres are kind of scary. They hit really hard. They miss a lot, but when they hit, they hit really hard. I have a new scroll to read, which is a scroll of Enchant Weapon 1, which puts a plus 1 to accuracy on my axe. Which is nice, because axes are pretty high on damage, but pretty low on accuracy. They swing slowly, so they're easy to dodge. Another thing that I'm doing is focus training axes to raise my skill in axes very high as fast as I can, which makes me attack faster and do a little more damage, percent-wise. There's a lot of math behind that that I don't want to get into because, frankly, I don't really understand it all. What I do know is that the more I train in a skill, the better I get at it, and that weapon skill most directly affects attack speed. And hey, the more times I hit things with my axe, the better. Alright. I think the next thing that I'm going to do is to go and look around in the Orcish Mines. Which can be dangerous. They're not usually the first branch that I want to explore. See, look at this. This is monstrous. Okay, I've got to be cautious here. I'm going to summon an ally. See, I've summoned a rock troll to help me. Then I'm going to step forward. Forward. Go berserk. And begin cutting my path through the orcs to kill the priests. You can see I'm doing pretty okay by myself. Ooh, Trog gave me a gift. Looks to be a halberd, which is a pole arm instead of an axe, which isn't very useful. Anti-magic, Trog's favorite brand. I am going to hold on to that because I, it is useful to have an anti-magic weapon around in case I run across a spellcaster I can't kill.
I hate wargs. They run away when I'm about to kill them. Some enemies will do that. They'll be either intelligent enemies who know that the battle is going poorly for them, or animals who are just afraid for their own lives. And they'll flee when they're low on health. Seen. I can take on dozens of regular orcs, but orc warriors are still quite powerful. And down the stairs, I saw an orc knight, which is frankly terrifying. There's only one way down those stairs, so I don't feel like dealing with the orc knight and psyche. So instead, I'm going to go down to a different level of the dungeon on a different level. Oh, the ears off, Cal. You can fix it. And poke around a little bit. But first, a quick break. Actually, it's nine levels deep in the dungeon, and I've been recording for quite a while, so I think I will break this off and uh, cut out that pause, and we will pick this up another time. For the time being, this is Backslash Echo, signing off.